Hello everybody, we're back in part 4, and in this video we're going to be looking at constant voltage A-type versus B-type drivers. In the last video we looked at constant current A-type versus B-type, and I hope that video made sense just because those drivers are a lot easier and a lot more straightforward to use than the ones we're going to be looking at today. For example, with the constant current B-type driver, if you adjust your external pot just a little bit, you're guaranteed to see the current change. If you turn the pot down, you're going to drop current. If you turn it up, you're going to increase the current. Same goes for the A-type. If you turn the built-in pot down, you're going to see your current drop, guaranteed. And if you turn it up, you're going to see that current rise again. But that's not exactly the case, necessarily, with the constant voltage B-type and A-type. You can have situations where you turn that pot and nothing happens, even though they're kind of doing the same thing, but in a different way. So even though these CV drivers have some weirdnesses to them and they might operate a little bit differently than their CC counterparts, don't let that intimidate you. It's really not that difficult. You just need sort of a basic understanding of how these things are working, why they do what they do, and that's exactly what I hope to cover in the rest of the video. Okay, let's dig into the CV stuff now. We'll just do an overview of each of the different types and then we'll get into the specifics. We'll start with the B-type. So with the B-type constant voltage drivers, the output voltage of that driver that's being held constant is fixed and it's not directly adjustable via the dimming leads. So what I mean by that is, let's say you have an HLG120H-54B. Well, when you plug that thing in, you're going to see 54.0 volts or something very close to that on your multimeter. And messing with the dimming leads via potentiometer or PWM or whatever it is you have is not going to directly change that voltage. The only time you're going to see the voltage change on a B-type constant voltage is when you have pulled all the available current from that driver and you've kicked it into constant current mode. And when it's in CC mode, you're only ever going to see the voltage drop. It will never be above what the rated voltage is for the driver. Just like the constant current B-type, the constant voltage B-type uses the same 3-in-1 style dimming leads. So that means that you can use pulse width modulation or DC voltage or resistance to dim. Obviously the most common would be resistance. People like to just slap a potentiometer like I'm going to do onto their leads and use that. Now something completely critical to understanding how these things work. When you make changes on the dimming leads, whether it's by resistance, voltage, or PWM, effectively what you're doing is reducing the total available current supply that that driver is producing. So for example, let's say you have a driver that does up to 12 amps at 54 volts. So when that pod is turned up to 100%, that driver is capable of supplying 12 amps. Now, if you start turning that pot down, that 12 amps is no longer available. Let's say you turn it down to 50%. Well, now there's only 6 amps available, right? So unlike a constant current driver, which is producing a steady level of current, this thing is only really changing how much is available to the lights, even though they may not necessarily be taking it. You know what I mean? So you can have an instance where you have a board on this driver that's only drawing 2 amps, even though it has 12 amps available to it. And if you turn the pot down to 6 amps, then you're not going to see any dimming because it's still only pulling 2, because that's all it wants. But there's now 6 available instead of 12, so there would be no change, right? If you don't really get constant voltage and parallel wiring, I would recommend checking out part 2 of this series, which goes over it and how it works. And don't worry, even though I'm kind of glossing over this right now, we're going to revisit this point in detail with some diagrams very shortly. Moving on to the A-type CV driver, the A-type constant voltage has two different built-in potentiometers. One of them is called VO adjust, which lets you directly adjust the output voltage, unlike the driver we were just talking about, the type B constant voltage, where it's fixed. The type A allows you to mix that up, and you can go several volts in either direction, under or over what the driver is rated for, so that's kind of cool. And it also has another pod called IO adjust, which works the same way as the dimming leads do on the B-type in that it allows you to adjust the total available current supply that the driver is producing. Okay, time to get into details. We're going to start with the B-type and focus on that first. Let's look at this diagram that I've got set up here. So here is my 600H54, and I know it doesn't look like one, but just play along. This is a 600H54 volt driver. In the middle is the driver current. This is just a, a bar that I'm going to use to show the available current and the current that's pulled by the load. So this 
driver here is capable of doing 12 amps of current roughly at 54 volts and we have our potentiometer in the bottom right right now it's turned up to hundred percent so what this means is that when the pot is at hundred percent this driver can do 12 amps and all 12 amps are available to the load now there's nothing hooked up to it right now so really you're not going to see any current flow but we can still show what's happening when you turn the potentiometer down so at 100 percent all the current which is 12 amps is free to be pulled by whatever you hook up to this thing now let's say we turn it down to 75 percent so our pots turned down now we now have 75 percent of the full current available to whatever the load is so that means that there's nine amps now that this driver can produce and supply to whatever's hooked up to it and this is going to keep dropping as we turn the pot down so if we go down to 50 percent now there's only six amps available to whatever you hook it up or whatever you hook up to it let's say you had 10 quantum boards if you hook them all up to this thing and your pot is at 50 percent they're going to have to split six amps if you had it turned up to 100%, now those 10 boards are going to be splitting 12 amps, right? So take it down to 25%, now there's only 3 amps that are available. 0%, there's nothing. This is a 0 to 10 volt driver, so nothing would be flowing to this, no matter how many boards you had. So let's add some quantum boards then to keep going with this example. So we've turned our pot back up to 100% here. We have two quantum boards hooked up. And let's just say at 54 volts, which is what this thing is holding steady, these boards want 2.5 amps each, which isn't totally accurate, but it's close enough and it's a nice round number. So when we have two of these boards in parallel, that's 5 amps total. And I'm showing that in red here. This is the current that's pulled by this load. So these boards are pulling 5 amps. And since our pot is at 100%, that means that there's 12 amps available to them. So they're taking five, that means that there's another seven amps that could be pulled. So if you added more boards, they would keep pulling this. Now let's turn it down to 75%. Okay, so now we have nine amps available. We're still pulling five, nothing has changed, right? All we've done by turning the pot down is restricted the total available current to nine amps from 12. If we turn it down to 50%, now we have six amps that are available so we're getting really close we only have one amp of overhead right now but still nothing has changed right we haven't changed the current to these things because we haven't restricted it far enough so we've already turned our pot down 50 percent it's halfway but nothing has changed there's no dimming at all these things are going to be just as bright as they were at a hundred percent so essentially we've got half of this pot 50 percent of this potentiometer doing nothing for us so the next step, let's say we took it down to 25%. Okay, now something has happened, right? We've restricted the available current down to 3 amps, which is 25% of the total 12. Now, the boards are only able to pull 3 amps each, or sorry, 3 amps total, which is 1.5 amps each. So they have dimmed because they're getting a full amp less than they were before. So these things are almost at half brightness, not quite, but they have definitely dimmed. And uh, I'm showing only the red bar now. You can see that there is blue behind it. This, this much current is available, you just can't see it, but it's matching, right? These boards are pulling everything that they can, but they're being restricted by the driver because we've turned it down. So that means that they've dimmed, and it also means that this thing is now in constant current mode because this is a CV plus CC driver, technically. All the meanwhile HLG constant voltage drivers are considered constant voltage plus constant current, and that happens, this mode change happens when the load pulls all the available current from the driver. So it was running in constant voltage mode here when we're at 50%. This is still CV mode and the current is still going to fluctuate a little bit. But now we move down to here, 25%, it's now constant current mode. And that also means that the voltage is no longer going to be 54 because it's moved into that CC mode. And these boards at 1.5 amps will not have 54 volts across them. It's going to be 53 point something, right? So that's what you're going to see on the circuit. And the more you restrict this, the lower you're going to see the voltage drop as well. And again, if we take it all the way down to zero, nothing is going to flow. We have restricted the current completely 
to zero amps, so the boards can't pull anything and they're going to have nothing across them. And that is going to be that. Something to sort of keep in mind is the amount of current that your load is pulling is going to affect how the pot works and how much you get out of turning your pot down. So if you have a really small load on a big driver, let's say for example we're using this 600H and we have only a single quantum board on there pulling 2.5 amps. That is going to take our current draw down to about here, say 2.5 amps roughly. If the pot's at 100%, then that means we have 9.5 amps of overhead. That's a ton, right? This thing is running in constant voltage mode. We would have to turn this thing down way down. Like, even if we brought it down to a quarter, that's not going to do anything still. That brings the current supply down to 3 amps. The board is still pulling 2.5 amps. We haven't even begun to dim it we'd have to pull this down to say maybe 12% like here. At this point, we're gonna start to see a little bit of dimming, right? The board's gonna get a little less current than it's already getting. So that only leaves you with this range, you know, between zero and 12%. Like you can turn the pot down and up this much to dim that board and anything over this level is going to just be maxed. So you've essentially wasted three quarters of this pot. And opposite of that, let's just kind of back up. If we were to add say three more boards on top of this, so I'm just going to take this all the way back. Now let's say we've got a total of four of these boards and I'm just going to lazily paste them on here. I'm not even going to wire them up, but just pretend that these are now all wired in parallel, all four of them. So if the pot's turned up to 100% and we have a full 12 amps available to us, these things are going to be drawing 10 amps. We'll call it right there. So that's going to really change how this thing works. Now, if we dim down to 75%, I got to ungroup this again. We dim this driver to 75%, we're already going to have an effect. Now it's been brought down to 9 amps, and these things have already started to dim because they're pulling or they're getting less than they would like at 54 volts. And if we keep going further down to 50%, then they have dimmed a lot. We're at 6 amps now, right? So we have taken away four amps from the start so these things are getting quite a bit dimmer and we have almost the full range of the potentiometer to take these things from a hundred percent down to zero percent compare that to the little bit like the little sliver that we got with the single board so I guess the better that your load is matched to the max current of the driver the more you're going to get uh, as far as range goes out of your pot so if you have, let's say you had a perfect 12 amps of draw between, you know, maybe you had six boards or something, then this thing is going to start here. You're going to be maxed out even when this thing is turned up all the way to 100%. And as soon as you budge that just a tiny little bit, you're going to start losing current and it's going to start dimming and it's going to change over to constant current mode immediately. So now you're already in the 53 volts. Now you're at 52 volts, maybe 51, and then eventually it goes all the way down to zero volts once you hit that 0% dim. Just to show you how this works, I have a single quantum board hooked up to this 600H54. And when I start turning the pot and getting some current flowing through the circuit, you can see how quickly we max this thing out. And right here I'm at 54 volts already and I've barely started turning the pot. So turning up the pot any further is not gonna do anything. I can take it to the halfway point, which I can feel with a little bump. And we're not going to be able to change anything really by turning it up any further. Even if I go from 50% to max, the voltage does not change because, again, we're only changing how much current this board is able to pull from the driver. And since it's already pulling as much as it wants, adding more to the stockpile isn't really going to help or do anything. So we're limited to this tiny little sliver of potentiometer usage for the single board. Now compare this to a six board setup. Check out how much range we have on the pot now. Here's the 25% mark, and we get the to the 50% mark, we're still gaining current. 
And uh, as we go from 50% to 100%, we're still picking up more and more current as we go. And I've only got three boards being measured for current here, just the top row, because if I were to try to measure all six of them, I'd be pulling over 10 amps, and that would blow the fuse on this multimeter. So that's why it looks like we're only getting about 5 amps. And if I throw the clamp on it, then we can actually see that the circuit is doing over 11 amps. I want to circle back to the single board setup just for a second to discuss one more thing, and then we're going to move on to type A. You know how we were talking earlier about constant voltage plus constant current drivers? Well, this is one of them, and this setup is a good way to demonstrate how constant voltage mode works. So when we turn this pot up past the point of that quarter turn or so, and we start to see the full 54 volts on the multimeter, it's at this point that we know we're running in CV mode because A, we're getting the full rated voltage. If it were any less than 54 volts, we'd know that we were in CC mode. And B, you can also see the current creeping up on the multimeter, so we know that there is more current available to be pulled. Compare this again to that six board setup where even when we have the pot cranked, we're still not getting 54 volts, and that's because all the current is getting pulled by these boards. So we know that this thing is running in CC mode even when it's maxed out on the pot. So that wraps up the B type constant voltage. Now we just have the A type and we're all good. The A-Type has two built-in potentiometers, one of them is called I.O. Adjust for Current, the other is called V.O. Adjust for Voltage. The I.O. Adjust works just like the B-Type potentiometer does, where it just restricts the amount of current that's available to your light, but the V.O. Adjust is different. So right now I have nothing hooked up to this driver, but you can see when I start moving this one around, it's changing that voltage, and I can move from 54 volts, which is what it's rated for, all the way up to 60 volts, and then all the way down on the other end to 48 volts. So there's a really wide range of voltage that you can get out of this driver. And this proves very handy too, the fact that you can adjust it before you even hook up your lights. So you know that it's dialed in. The tricky part of working with these A-type constant voltage drivers is definitely figuring out how these two pots interact with one another and the effects that each of them have. And if you're playing with your driver, you may find that it's not really working like you thought it would because it is kind of a complex interaction between the two. So what we'll do is hook up one of these QBs to start with and try adjusting both of the pots and sort of see how they work together. And then we'll hook up a few more boards and finally maybe go over some best practices for tuning one of these things and getting them set up for your system. One thing that you absolutely must understand that I hopefully have drilled into your head by now is that with an LED, as you increase the voltage, fed to it, you're going to increase the current that it draws, and vice versa. If you feed more current to an LED, the voltage across it is going to increase, and the same goes for decreasing too. I'm going to start with both of the potentiometers turned all the way down to minimum on this HLG 120H54A, and when I plug it in, we're getting a voltage of 48.48 volts and a current of 464 milliamps. We're going to leave the current pot turned down to minimum, but we're going to adjust the voltage pot upwards and see what happens. When the voltage pot gets turned up, we're topping out at a bottleneck of about 725 milliamps and 49.4 volts. And even if I keep turning the voltage up on this VO adjust pot, you can see the screwdriver is turning, but nothing is really changing on the meters, right? That is because this driver is running in constant current mode right now because the board is eating up all the available current, which I've turned way down, and in order to get more voltage across it, it would have to be able to produce more current, which we're not letting it, so I can't get the voltage up to where it should be. Now let's go the other direction. Let's turn the voltage pot all the way to minimum, and let's crank the current pot. And this is even less eventful, because this board at 48.48 volts doesn't want any more than 475 milliamps. So turning that pot for current does absolutely nothing because we don't have enough voltage going to the board to make it draw more. So now that we've checked out both of those scenarios, let's turn up both voltage and current. So we'll leave current cranked and move the voltage pot. When we have both of these pots wide open, we're now going to see full power out of this driver because we have opened the floodgates for current by turning that pot up to 100%, so everything that this thing can produce is available to the light, and we're going to turn the voltage up as high as it will go now. When it was an open circuit with nothing on it, we could get it up to 60 volts. In this case now, we're topping out at about 54.75 volts or so. And, of course, that's because it's limited by the current output of the driver. So even though this thing is putting out max current 100%, it can't raise the voltage any higher than 54.7 odd volts, just because there literally is no more current in this driver to give.
and if we wanted to see a higher voltage we would have to spit out more than 2.7 amps to that board to do it. So this is where the advantage of the A-type drivers come into play. We are getting a voltage of about, we'll call it 54.7 volts when it's turned all the way up, and a current of 2.7 amps out of this driver. So if you multiply those together, we're getting about 148 watts out of this HLG120H. And that's only because we're able to turn that voltage up higher than we can with the B-type, because if you remember, the B-type is fixed at its rated voltage. So with the, even though we had the big 600 watt driver running that other single board, we're actually able to get more power out of this little driver to a single board than the big one. You'll find that once you max your driver out, the more boards you add to that driver, the lower your total max voltage is going to be. So now that I have two boards on this thing and they're splitting that 2.7 amps between them, my max voltage when I crank both of these pots is going to be lower than it was with the single board, which was about 54.7 volts. So in this case, now we're still getting that full 2.7 amps of current, but when we bump up the voltage as much as we can, it's topping out at 51.76 volts. So we're actually getting less power out of the driver by splitting this into more boards. And if I add a third board, and I leave the voltage cranked and the current cranked, now we're splitting 2.7 amps by three boards, so we have a top voltage of only 50.46 now. And that's just because now that these boards are splitting 2.7 amps three ways, they're only getting 900 milliamps apiece. And at that current, there happens to be about 50.45 volts across them. So that's what our circuit current ends up being since the driver is in constant current mode. So that's how those two pots work together. Now you're probably wondering what is the best way to set one of these drivers up and get it sort of tuned for whatever you have connected to it. Because on a big driver, if you don't get the voltage and the current right, there's a chance that you're going to blow up whatever you have connected to it just because there's such a wide range of voltage. So this is how I set mine up. There are a few ways to do it, of course, but I think this is the best way, personally. Step one of my process is pick what your target current is. So let's say, for example, on this board, I want to hit 2100 milliamps. So that's what we're going to shoot for. And at this point, the driver should not be plugged in. It should be off. Step two would be to turn down both pots, so voltage is at minimum and current is at minimum. With both of the pots all the way down, you can now hook up your lights to the driver and plug it in and turn it on. Next, adjust your current pot all the way up to max. If, when you start to turn that pot up, you see your target current on the multimeter, just stop right there and you're essentially done. And this is unlikely to happen just because you shouldn't really see that much current flowing with the voltage turned all the way down, or you might have sort of a design mismatch maybe. But if you do see your current, just stop right there and you're set. Or if you don't see it quite get up to your target current, then turn the pot all the way to max. So just max that current pot all the way out, and then we're going to look at voltage next. Now, step four, start very slowly adjusting the voltage and watch your current on the multimeter. We don't really care what the voltage is, whether it's 53 volts or 54 volts or whatever it may be. I'm primarily concerned with making sure my current is dialed in. So I'm gonna adjust this up until I see 2.1 amps on that multimeter. So, and I don't really even need two multimeters for this. I'm just showing you with two so you can see both of the parameters at once, but really you only need to worry about your current. So now at this step, we have our target current in place. We're dialed into 2.1 amps, but it's slowly climbing up because the board's getting hotter, so it's drawing more and more current. And we don't want this to happen, so what do we do? Well, now we're going to start turning the current down to cap it at this level. So back to the current potentiometer and turning it down from max, we're going to turn it down until we see the current start to change. And it's at this point that we know that it's capped properly. So if I take it down and I see a dip below 2.1 amps, then that's the threshold that I need to leave it at. I'll just maybe move it up a little bit back to 2.1. And now it's set. And if I leave the current pot there, now I can move the voltage all the way down to dim it. And if I crank it all the way back up, then I know it's going to be capped at 2.1 amps. So it's set, right? Now I would just use the voltage to do the dimming. So that wraps that up. That's my method for setting up A-type constant voltage drivers. And this method should work most of the time. There may be a few odd cases where using that voltage pod doesn't quite work and you'll have to come up with something else. But this should do the trick for most of the time. And you can also use sort of a variation of this for B-type drivers as well, where you just turn your external pot down to the point where you see that dip and then leave it there. And that effectively caps it there as well. The only crappy thing is you don't have the voltage pot to dim with then and you're just setting that current for good, essentially. 
something worth noting is that capping the current like this on a single cob or a single board system will eliminate the chance of thermal runaway happening, but if you have multiple boards or cobs or strips on the same system, this does not completely eliminate the chance of thermal runaway. And even though it does stop the entire circuit from pulling more current, that still doesn't mean that the components within the circuit are going to play nicely and split that current evenly. So there's a chance that even though you might have it capped at 2.1 amps, that one board in particular takes more than the other of that 2.1 amps. All right, real quick, the advantages and disadvantages of A and B type constant voltage. Starting with A type, the advantages are you don't need to solder anything. The pots are both built into the driver, so you don't need to do anything. You just take it out of the box and then start adjusting with a screwdriver. Second, you can get more power out of these A type drivers because you're able to adjust that voltage higher than you can on the B type driver. And third, you do have that direct control of voltage on these drivers, whereas you do not on the B. Disadvantages of the A-Type include the fact that you can only dim them down to 50% of rated current, so if it's rated for 5 amps you can only get it down to 2.5, whereas with a B-Type you could get it all the way down to 0, and you can't dim them remotely because you don't have any dimming leads on these things, so you have to be able to access your driver and get at those pots if you want to dim it. Advantages of the B-Type, you have a wider range of dimming, so you can go from 0 to 100% or 10 to 100% depending on the driver. You can dim them remotely, which is great because you don't have to reach into your tent and, and get into some awkward space just to do the dimming. And it also offers some other options like 0 to 10 or 1 to 10 volt dimming or PWM signal dimming in addition to the resistance dimming that we were talking about. And the disadvantages of the B-Type are there's more work and additional parts because you've got to solder something on or connect something to those dimming leads to get them adjustable. If you just leave them unterminated then they're going to run at 100% so that might work for you too. And uh, last, you cannot get as much power from these B-Types as you can with the A-Type. That's going to do it guys, thank you very much as always for watching, and stick around because I have a few more videos planned for this series in particular. The next one is going to look at making the physical connections to the drivers, so things like terminating the AC side, the DC side, and your dimming and whatnot, and just a whole bunch of other unrelated videos in general on DIY LED stuff, so sub up, stick around, and we'll see you then.